Let's talk about the connection between Maxwell's equations and relativity. This connection is it stems from the uh, relationship between the electric field and the magnetic field. So let's see how, how that works. The uh, equation that we know that establishes that connection between electric and magnetic field is Faraday's law. What Faraday's law says is that, uh, as we wrote it, says that the induced electromotive force in a circuit is the derivative of the flux with respect to time. That flux, we know that can be written in terms of the magnetic field and the area of the loop. If the area of the loop is not changing, this equation tells you that the derivative of the magnetic field with respect to time, dot product with A, is what uh, gives you the electromotive force responsible for the induced current in the circuit. Now what is the, we talk about an electromotive force, what is really the force that is driving the charges inside the conductor? If you think about the situation with a loop and a magnet moving toward the loop, we know that the flux through the loop goes that way, that the magnet is approaching so the flux goes up, and that therefore the induced current in the loop should go this way. To produce an induced magnetic field that opposes the change in flux. Now, what kind of force is driving the charge uh, to make it go around the loop that way? It is not a magnetic force because the charge is because the loop is not moving. If there is no motion, there is no magnetic forces. So it must be a different kind of force. The answer is that that force is actually an electric force. And from this equation, actually, one can obtain that an equation that relates. The, relates directly the electric field with the magnetic field. The equation that I'm talking about can be written as this. The, which is a different representation of Faraday's law in terms of magnetic field and electric field alone. So this equation, uh, you can uh, have a graphical representation of this, which is if there is a magnetic field in space that is changing in time, the equation, the curl of E equals minus dB dt, tells you that there must be, going around those magnetic field lines that are changing in time, there must be also electric field lines. Tells you that E curls around changing magnetic field lines. And therefore this equation explains what kind of force is the one that is driving the induced current in the loop. Because if at this region of space where you have the electric field going around, if at that location in space you add a conductor, piece of conductor here, that conductor the charges inside that conductor will obviously be driven by the electric field that exists inside and uh, a induced current will be established in the circuit an induced current flowing this way so this equation uh, for example implies that if you have a magnet that is moving through space this is the magnet North Pole, South Pole. We do know that the magnet has magnetic field lines that come out of the North Pole, go towards the South Pole. But the equation, Faraday's uh, equation, written in terms of the electric and magnetic field, tell you that there must be also electric field lines around this magnet. those uh, electric field lines are the ones that are responsible for driving the current in a conductor that is placed in the neighborhood of this moving magnet. So for an observer that sees the magnet moving with a certain velocity, for that observer there will be an electric field 
and there will be a magnetic field. So this equation, Faraday's equation, establishes the connection between electric field and magnetic field. Now, at the, at the time of Maxwell, before Maxwell uh, made his contribution, uh, the equations that were known at the time could be written using Maxwell's um, notation in terms of the divergence of E being equal to or being caused by the charge density at some place in space. This equation basically means that the electric field diverges or originates from positive charges and it converges onto negative charges. Right. If this is a positive charge, the electric field comes out of a positive charge and the electric field goes towards negative charges and it ends at negative charges. This is what this equation basically says. Another equation that was known at the time was Faraday's equation that we just discussed. It tells you that E, the electric field, curls around changing magnetic field lines. A third equation is the equation that tells you that there's no magnetic monopoles, that is the magnetic field lines always curl around, they are never originated at one point. The magnetic field does not diverge or converge onto any point in space. And the third equation, which is Ampere's law, tells you that the magnetic field curls around currents. If you have a current in space, this J is current density. If you have a current in space, then that current generates a magnetic field. These are the equations as they were known at the time of Maxwell. Now when he looked at these equations, when Maxwell looked at these equations as they apply for empty space, he noticed that there was an asymmetry between the electric field and the magnetic field. Equations, I'm going to rewrite them as they apply for empty space. Notice that in empty space there is no charge density, so the rho is zero. B is still zero because there is no magnetic monopoles. And the last equation that, uh, as it applies for empty space, is that the curl of B is equal to zero. Now, when he looked at these equations, he noticed that these two equations establish a symmetry between the electric field and the magnetic field but that these two equations were radically different. In this equation, over here, the magnetic field, a change in magnetic field can produce or generate an electric field, but that behavior is absent in this equation. No, uh, there's no changing of electric field that can generate a magnetic field. Now he had, uh, as many scientists did and still do, has this idea that nature is of the beauty of nature and that beauty is usually connected with symmetry. So he thought that such a symmetry between the electric field and the magnetic field was strange and uh, that got him to think about the possibility of adding an additional term here to this equation so that the symmetry between the electric and the magnetic field uh, will be restored in these equations. So the term that he ended up adding was this one, to the last equation. The curl of V, in general, is equal to the current density, mu sub zero times the current density. This, remember, this is the equation, this is Ampere's equation, that it says that if you have a current, there will be a magnetic field that curls around that current. The equation, or the term that Maxwell added was a term associated with the contribution to the magnetic field due to a change in electric field. This term is called, or has been called, the displacement current. And this is the term that restores the symmetry between the electric and the magnetic field in the electromagnetism, in the equations for electromagnetism. If you write these equations, let me write them again for empty space. Faraday's law is this one. And now with the additional term 
that Ma Maxwell incorporated in the equations, the last equation reads something different. It says that the curl of B in empty space is equal to mu sub 0, epsilon 0, dE dt. So now an electric field can, a change in electric field can generate a magnetic field, and a change in magnetic field can generate an electric field. So with this symmetry between the electric field and the magnetic field, he um, said to solve these equations in empty space, see what kind of solution he would obtain. The solution turns out to be very interesting. The solution in empty space tells you that there can be an electric and a magnetic field in empty space, but those electric and magnetic fields have to move. They must be on the move, and they must move with a velocity given by this formula. The constants mu sub 0 and epsilon 0 determine the speed at which this electric and magnetic field uh, move through space. Now what do they look like? What do these electric and magnetic field look like as they move through space? Well they are a traveling wave if you take this as the x-axis, this is the z-axis, this is the y-axis. A electromagnetic wave propagating, say, in the x-direction looks like this. Electric field everywhere in space, but pointing and having different magnitudes at different points. And that change in electric field as the wave moves the velocity of the electromagnetic wave at every point in space there will be a change in electric field and associated with that there is a magnetic field so the arrows that I'm drawing here represent the magnetic field at different points in space and those two fields oscillate in planes that are perpendicular to each other so this whole contraption this whole uh, electromagnetic wave moves in space with a velocity given by 1 over the square root of mu sub 0 epsilon 0. These are electric and magnetic fields that reinforce each other. As the electric field changes, it produces a magnetic field. As that magnetic field changes, it reinforces the electric field. Now when you Maxwell put the numbers the value for mu sub zero and epsilon zero in his equation for the velocity of the electromagnetic wave that he had just discovered, he was in for a big surprise because the velocity of that electromagnetic wave turned out to be 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, a number that you all recognize as being the speed of light. Now, what could this possibly mean? Well, the only possible explanation is that light is an electromagnetic wave, that electromagnetic waves exist and that they propagate through space and that actually light is one of them. It is not the only one because according to the frequency you know that electromagnetic waves are given different names, radio waves, microwaves, light, x-rays, gamma rays, uh, but they're all, even though they have different names, they're all the same thing. They are electromagnetic waves that propagate through space with the 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second speed. So this incredible discovery by Maxwell um, added another piece to the puzzle of the nature of light. Because as you know, throughout the centuries, the discussion, the debate between uh, those who believe that light was made of particles moving and those who believe that light was a wave uh, the, the um, consensus kept changing from one position to another. Now Maxwell, with this discovery, definitely reinforces the, the idea that light is a wave. Now Maxwell knows what kind of wave it is. It is an electromagnetic wave. After this, as you probably know, came the discovery of Einstein that um, there is particles in light called photons that uh, the, the particle nature of light is something that is also important that manifests itself in specific experimental setups and that therefore light is neither a wave nor a particle, it's actually both 
a wave and a particle. But that's another story. So for now let's focus on what this all means. Now it took 40 years after Maxwell published his uh, equations in their final form with the uh, additional term that we just mentioned. This was in 1862. It took 40 years for an a brilliant mind like Einstein's to realize that this all implied relativity, that electromagnetic theory was an, a relativistic theory, that the whole edifice of relativity could be built on electromagnetic theory.